Hi there, coming to you live from the Heinz Hope Recording Studios here in the home office. Uh, this is Unit 8. Uh, we're going to talk about effective teacher behaviors and uh, characteristics here relating to Chapter 13 in your textbook. So if you uh, want to read on on some of that, that's a good place to go. A little bit here on uh, why teaching, a couple slides here, and, and of course it's quite demanding. We've talked about a, a number of different challenges uh, throughout the entire semester here of, of why uh, teaching is, is really tough, yet it's an extremely rewarding career. And so I would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, and there's a ton of advantages of being an agriculture agricultural educator. Uh, you know, kind of there's a list one through seven here, and I think it's continued on the next slide, but there's a wide array of job activities. It's not, uh, to me, I, I could never picture myself maybe as teaching English or something like that, where the content is the same every single day, every single year uh, in perpetuity. Uh, I like the fact that in agriculture education, you have to stay up on the current needs and trends of the industry, what's different, what's coming along. And then on a day-to-day -day basis and a year-to-year -year basis, things are different with your students. Uh, certain things work and certain things don't. Uh, so there's a wide array of job activities and job things that you can do. Uh, obviously, the, you have the opportunity to make a, a real significant difference with your students. Um, part of the, the one thing I really, really enjoy about being at the post-secondary level at the two-year community college is that I get to see a student that has begun to form what they uh, were interested in a, in a career as they come out of high school. And by the time they leave our campus, as sophomores, they really have now honed in on their skills. They've really honed in on their career pathway. They really have a, a clear, uh, oftentimes a clear identification of whom they are and what they want to be and where they're going. And that has always been one of the most rewarding pieces of teaching at the community college for me. Number three is it's fairly stable. This is a fairly stable environment. Uh, if you do a good job, you'll have the opportunity to, to teach uh, for a long period of time and work at a, at a, at a number of great uh, great places. So there's there's a, a lot of job stability and there's a ton of job need right now. We've discussed that a little bit in class, uh, but as teachers continue to retire out of the system, uh, that rate of retirement is much greater than the rate of new teachers we have entering the system at this point in time. The pension and retirement plans are quite good, uh, as well as the benefit packages most of the time. So. I would highly encourage you to think about teaching in that regard is you'll have the opportunity to save uh, into the retirement systems that are afforded to you. Extended contracts, this is not something that everyone has as a teacher, uh, but agriculture educators do because of the summer assignments that they do have. So it allows you to make additional money on top of what a typical teacher starting salary, which as of uh, uh, just recently here by law, the starting, minimum starting salary for teachers is $40,000. You do have a good deal of autonomy because oftentimes you're not hooked to anybody else's uh, program in the school. Uh, you can do a lot of different things the way that you want them to do and run your program in a manner that uh, reaches to your benefits. And so that's a really uh, nice advantage of being in agriculture education as well. And of course, the connection to agriculture with a focus on the great many uh, people that are within our industry is so awesome. I mentioned there was a whole other list here. Obviously, the community uh, connections um, and things of that nature, it's a great personal challenge in development that you have to stay up on a number of different things on a year-to-year on -year basis. Uh, lots of you like to be within a social and recreational community involved. And this is a key, uh, that's a key part of being a good agriculture educator. There's very little actual overnight travel. And some would, uh, e even though there's maybe a lot of late evenings, uh, there's not a lot of extended period of time where you might uh, travel for a week at a time or so on and so forth. Um, previous job before I came here, um, working at a highly agricultural community college campus, I was a recruiter. I spent nine weeks a year on the road. Uh, in total. And some might be two or three day stretches, uh, but then I had about three or four weeks where I spent a full week on the road at a time. So uh, that sounds fun for a little while, but for me, um, I needed to get home and I needed to be home more often. And I missed that fact. It was it was intriguing for a little while, but after so many days and, uh, and weeks in a row at, at times, 
uh, being in hotels and eating out and things of that nature. It just didn't speak to me in terms of being a, an exceptionally fun career. Uh, so, but teaching, uh, while there's a little bit of overnight travel that, that I have now, it's certainly not what it would have been uh, in some of the other careers that, that you may encounter out there. Really competitive salary, we talked about that, and, and Ag Ed has gotten much, much better at that. Opportunity for advancement as you go into the other areas of Ag Ed, uh, there's some opportunity for advancement. Some recognition program, and then uh, one of the really neat things about uh, my career is the connections that I have with others in my profession, whether it's uh, teachers here in Section 21 and 22 that, that I have a great deal of respect for and have learned from and model some of the things that I do after them, uh, all the way up through the university ranks of people that have made big impacts on my career. Those connections are really, really incredibly uh, beneficial in your in your lifespan of your career. Obviously, one of the things that um, some really worry about is managing student misbehavior. And a lot of that goes into, you know, how well can you put together a set of rules and expectations and then follow through in which you can um, create consistency among students in terms of how what they expect in your classroom. Uh, you remove the time for them to fool around. That minimizes misbehavior. Um, so, but don't intimidate them. Don't threaten them. Don't belittle them. Don't, don't discipline through fear. That generally doesn't work, and some will actually rebel against that. Uh, be challenging all the time, yet be really fair, and present your best best self all the time. Uh, and it's hard to be on your game in and out of the classroom every single day. Everyone has bad days. Uh, but try and be on your game every single time uh, in and out of the classroom because that is, you're not just judged by the eight to three day that you're in the classroom. Work with your students and empower them. If they feel like they have some ownership in the classroom, they're more likely to mind you uh, much better and not go home and complain to mom and dad. Uh, understand that occasionally there are behavioral problems for other reasons and try and understand what those reasons are and address them appropriately. Seek help if you need to. There are professionals in your school systems that can help you in that regard. Uh, communicate really, really effectively. That's super critical when you talk about setting expectations, both with your students and with your parents. Uh, communicate really clearly as to the rules, guidelines, expectations, and outcomes that you uh, have in your classroom, and then consequences should there be bad behavior. Uh, keep your interest, uh, keep your classroom interesting, fun, and engaging. Again, the the less time that they have to fool around, the less likely they are to be behavioral problems. If we look at some research uh, on effective teaching, some things that have been actually studied and proven, uh, there's some fundamental approaches to collaborative relationships that between the student and the teacher that keeps them respectful, professional, and productive. Uh, a teacher-led democratic classroom in which students develop ownership in their learning is really critical. Think of yourself not necessarily just as a teacher, an authoritarian figure who's presenting uh, information as a, in a one-way uh, path out to your students. Instead, transform yourself into a facilitator. And this is, again, true if we're talking about working within a group, um, you know, in, in a workspace. Uh, working with a group of farmers, making a presentation, transform yourself into a facilitator uh, who can lead a, a number of different activities but involve the students or the audience in the learning process. Be clear with high expectations in the learning process. Push students to achieve uh, bars that they did not think was possible. Vary your delivery. Uh, do a number of different things, whether it's independent learning, small groups, lab activities, things of that nature. Uh, that will really help. Keep a really good and live pace to your instruction with a lot of student engagement. Get a lot of feedback. Uh, you know, if you keep your class interesting, change it up occasionally, uh, engage them in different ways. You'll tend to keep different populations of students that easily get bored or distracted. Um, you kind of keep them engaged and, and keep students feeling like they have a say so in what's going on in the classroom. But yet, set clear boundaries and expectations for academic and social behavior in the classroom. They should know where the lines are. And so as to wrap this section up, um, there's some, some good tables on, on effective agriculture teachers uh, in your textbook on page 213 and 214. I would encourage you to go check those out. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps you do your homework a lot better.
Take care.